Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Canon Culture Podcast, where we do it for the cash, the clout, and the culture. Uh, this is your host, Just Jay Sama. I'm here with producer Plank. Five what? Nights of Freddy's. Yes, sir. I have to talk about it. We watched it last night for the first time. Um, mm. Would you say you were impressed with the FNAF movie? It was definitely... She said she was impressed, but it was not what she was expecting. She also didn't know it was based on a video game, so... Mm. Yeah, so of course, you know, I had to pull up the MatPat video and she fell asleep, so. That's crazy. Yeah, MatPat L Creator. No, I'm... <laughs> no, he was great. <laughs> yeah, he was, he, had, he was great. <laughs> he had the community on lock. He really did, he had dropped. everybody tapped in, so. Um, that was the only way I knew about, about FNAF. Um, I think I yeah, saw... Yeah, I never even played the game. Yeah, I think I saw some stuff. I, it was like in this order. It was Phasmo, Dead by Daylight, FNAF for me. Um, so in, in the list of bangers. But we'll talk about that later on in the show. Um, Big Planko, how you doing, man? Wow. Yes, yeah, sir. We back with a new season for a new reason. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, all right. So uh, we don't have a third topic to talk about on the show today, unless you have something off the top of your head. Uh, talking about the Game Awards today and uh, obviously FNAF. So. Oh, I mean, we could talk about... Have you seen Loki? Uh, like no, I have not two? been watching Loki. I've seen lots of spoilers on Twitter about the ending, um, which truly makes me not care about watching the show now. So. Yeah, I think that first season... It was like coming off that big wave of shit and we were like really locked in but i feel like now it's just like damn we waited all this time for this and the ending was kind of ass for season one in my opinion yeah the ending of season one was not it didn't really hit like that and yeah you're right like post end game like we were trying to catch a bunch of stuff like oh okay all right they're they're about to build up to a new one yeah nah everything's falling on its face um matter of fact the marvels i think uh let's see what that i think they didn't even the make marvels. i think they hit a hundred million worldwide golly yeah man the budget for this is two point two hundred and seventy five point eight million dollars on the budget for this movie and so far they've Jesus. only cleared 110 and that's uh that's worldwide not domestically um, Ooh. of course you know the narrative is going to be oh the of course Marvel has an all-female cast, so nobody's going to watch the movies. No, that's not it. The movie, the movie just sucks. Like nobody likes Captain Marvel. She just didn't make that much of an impact, literally, in, uh, in within like you know the first ten years of the MCU, and it's just it, it's just a lot to build up, you know, post Endgame. It's just not it's just not happening, bro. Like, yeah, I don't know. But then again, the argument could be said that there's just first of all having to watch three different tv shows in order to like keep up with what's going on with this movie is just not i'm not here for it uh that's not really something i'm interested in three tv shows i didn't watch mind you so I, yeah. <laughs> they weren't interesting when they came out and they're not interesting now um but uh to play devil, devil's advocate about you know post end game um i don't know Guardians of the Galaxy did really well. Spider-Man did really well. So I, I really can't say it's like, you know, fatigue. The worst. Post, yeah, it's not the worst yeah. post-Endgame. So um, didn't Doctor Strange 2. Yeah, that one that one post-Endgame. So I don't know. Maybe people are just not interested in this. Uh, I can only speak for me personally. I don't really care for Captain Marvel. She's like the Superman character. So she can just do anything she wants. She's all powerful, blah, 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 blah. That makes her boring. Like, she's just not, she's just not interesting. Now, Monica Rambo, on the other hand, like, she should have got her own shit. I'm not going to lie. Because mm. her and, you know, the other girl, I'm just like, I, I forget her name. Miss Miss Marvel? Is that who yeah, she's Ms. supposed Marvel. to be? Yeah, Miss Marvel. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool of her. Because um, I didn't you see her like TV her? show. I didn't see her TV show. So, it just wasn't, uh, I don't know. It just, I just wasn't into it. Now, if they would have had, like, this movie come earlier, which, you know, obviously, post-pandemic, you know, it's kind of kind of difficult. Oh, matter of fact, you know what else? Uh, just to go back to it, I know I'm all over the place. You know what else came out post-Endgame? Shang-Chi. Shang that shit slapped. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, that shit was fire, like man. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. This just seemed really uninteresting. Uh, I'm not 
not particularly down with it. Any reason why you didn't go see the movie? Aside from you being broke? Um, what? Which one? The <laughs> Captain Marvel or the Marvels? <laughs> uh, Marvels either, was either. never gonna. I know watch. we watched. Uh, didn't we? Were you there uh, when we watched FNAF in the Discord? No, nah, I didn't watch FNAF. Uh, okay, all right. You didn't miss anything. I I, I saw that Mad Pat was there, and I was like, mm, that's interesting. But uh, FNAF is one of those series like you, the lore is so much more impactful than like the other shit that I didn't, just didn't want to see it. Yeah. And they honestly, the idea of FNAF is way better than like I guess FNAF in general. True, I guess. the the concept and the idea is crazy because even explaining it, you know, to her, I was like, I was like, oh yeah, this is some of the story, blah 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 blah. Like I was trying to not spoil the movie while we were watching it, and uh, just because you know I was familiar with the the lore, and it sounds so much more interesting than the actual like execution product. of it because i brought up i brought up matt pat's video and like the gameplay and i was like i don't remember this game looking this shitty like i, I just remember like the security room and like the the jumping at animatronics and shit like that like i forgot a lot of it is in this like weird 8-bit kind of shit like it just looks it, it looks gross like trying to get somebody mm. into fnaf the video game terrible trying to get them into the movie or like the lore easily easy super easy. easy so but uh yeah to go back to the marvels thing yeah i'm not i'm unfortunately i'm just not interested uh i'm sure somebody is out there but marvel's just um i'm i'm not with it i need dc to to come with another banger man they had us on the hook with the batman so a uh, batman 2 is gonna be ass you i already so? know batman 2 yeah mm. i can already tell what makes you say that why you feel that uh because the, the that Joker voice we heard at the end of Batman One, I I was like, ah, yeah, that's not it. I can already tell. Maybe he's not even gonna be in the movie. Yeah, okay. They wouldn't tease him if he wasn't in the movie. I hope not. I really hope not. Although, you know, the first one, the first one really, uh, I don't know what I was expecting, but this definitely beat any expectation I had for it. Oh yeah, 100%. So, you know, I was I was super shocked. I enjoyed that movie as much as I did. Um, I, I think we even Great had movie. a conversation about it. I know I, I don't know if you agreed. I don't remember, but I arguably will say that um, Matt Reeves, the Batman, was better than pretty much any other Batman movie that has come out. Like including like the Dark Knight franchise. Like the Dark Knight is a real snoozer, to be honest. But you know, uh, I some like some of the films. Uh, it's just some of the castings I think back then were not amazing, so that's why it kind of brings the film down. But th this new Batman, Robert Pattinson, he was good. Yeah. I think the the all the Batman castings are relatively good. It's just some some of the side pieces are are not casted to the, the best. True. That true. they could have. Yeah. Which I there's not a problem with, but it just brings the overall quality of the film down a little bit. Yeah. I think the that movie is still expected to come out 2025 in like october or something so really yeah that's what it says here on the um on the bulletin page so that's not bad 2025 yeah the expected current release date is october 3rd of 2025 i don't know how they're gonna hit that mark but if they i mean either way i'm going to see this movie so i'm excited for it but anyway, yeah, I was explaining to her that uh, a lot of video game movies really don't do very well and that uh, FNAF was made with a $50 million budget. And as of right wow. now, they've already passed $300 million. So, wow, that's really good, actually. Yeah, that, I didn't expect that. Yeah, that F Five Nights at Freddy's crowd is is insane, dude. And um, I was seeing um, I think I saw something on Twitter about the director uh, he was having uh, Scott, both Scott and uh, I forgot who directed this. Hold on. Let me pull it up, actually. Uh, you know, what's weird. Some of the video game movies do really well. And then like most of them do like shit. Yeah, I know the Mario movie did in fantastic. Oh, yeah. The Mario movie killed it. Sonic killed it. Like, yeah, I, I was actually very surprised that the Mario movie did as well as it did. So. Yeah, the casting, it seemed like it was going to be, we had some weird casting, but yeah, uh, they pulled through. I, 
great part. A great Def definitely great some movie. strange stuff, man. Jack Black as as uh, Bowser, Bowser was probably my favorite part. I didn't even see that movie all the way through. I should probably definitely watch it. But um, let's see, Emma Tammy. I remember it was either her or Scott said they weren't expecting this movie to do well because it didn't draw to like they didn't they basically didn't make this movie for wide audiences they made this movie directly for fans of the franchise and so they weren't expecting it to really make that much money domestically they were expecting a quieter week of making only 10 million dollars but after the opening weekend scored over 110 million dollars on a 50 million dollar budget so they made their money back that's for sure and that's not even including streaming so now i wonder if the release of this is before or or after you know the uh now that the strike is over you know what i mean i wonder if it if all of the residuals are i don't even think they've put that stuff into effect yet there's so many contracts that they probably have to sign which i think april yeah. will have more information about that than i do or i don't think she wants to be on the show today though um, Ooh. maybe next time maybe next time yeah maybe next time we talk about stuff that we don't know about like she can she can chime in every now and then but mm. isn't that right pretty sure okay. we don't She's know anything about anything so. pretty sure we don't know anything about anything which is why we have this podcast so <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's it's really just for us to learn new stuff as as we read things on the internet so um speaking yeah. of learning new things let's go ahead and talk about um some of these very interesting narratives that are being pushed with the game awards this year man um i'm not gonna lie to you i was not expecting half of these games first of all can we get a round of applause for 2023 this year has been the most packed year for video games that we've had in a long time i mean yes, the sir. pandemic was def uh, you know uh, i don't want to say it was good for gaming because it definitely wasn't you know millions of people passed, you know well, you know what I'm trying to say, man. <laughs> you you know what I'm saying. Listen, millions of people did, should not have had to die so we can get good video games. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, all of the video games that were delayed and stuff uh, decided to hit this year. And man, they hit the ground running. Um, right now, we're looking at for the Game of the Year nominees, we're looking at Alan Wake 2, which just dropped a couple weeks ago. Um, I was watching some people play that. that. That actually looks terrifying. I might have to pick that up. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, obviously, big banger this year. Marvel Spider-Man sure. 2, yeah, easily, easily. I think that's probably going to win this year, not going to lie. Um, here's where I kind of draw a line. Resident Evil 4. I don't think Resident Evil 4 should be nominated for Game of the Year. Maybe Remake of the Year, but not Game of the Year. Because it's not a, a, a co complete original game. And it's not like it's an overhaul of like you know, a different type of game. It's not like it was a top down, you know, like Grand Theft Auto 1 compared to Grand Theft Auto 5. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like it was a huge, vast change um, to the entire like storyline either. So it's not like it's a completely different game. I, I guess there's some different aspects to it. Yeah, I think we need to add a new, a, a new category of a uh, best remake because we're just getting a few too many. Like, it's not like Resident Evil 2 and the Resident Evil 2 remake. You know what I mean? Like, those are two completely, like... like it, it, If you saw them separately, you wouldn't even think they were based off the same game. Yeah. Or I guess the same content. Um, <clears throat> also, Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Um, I heard that was a real banger this year. Uh, I don't have a Nintendo I Switch yet, so... You know, mm. I'm not going to be playing that anytime soon. And of course, uh, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. That one I have been playing a little bit um allegedly so you know very very interesting lineup i'm surprised i didn't see star wars on this list i'm very surprised i didn't see star wars no remnant 2 um well remnant 2 is not getting game of the year yeah yeah, yeah, yeah for sure even though it was a great game yeah um what there's there, no there a lot of bangers that we played this year that i was expecting to see there's quite a few yeah, yeah uh so. i think star wars because of the issues it kind of got halted back and then the other games they're newer they're fresher they're probably more interesting in some some aspects yeah um i expected i, I didn't want to see it there but i expected to see hogwarts legacy that is one for sure i expected game of the year with the controversy i don't yeah, know if hogwarts yeah, legacy i mean got out that. bro that thing sold millions of copies i mean 
Is game of the year based off of quality or sales? Uh, probably quality. <laughs> uh, that's what I would think. And Hogwarts had it, man. It had some good quality. You know, it was a high quality game. There were still issues with that game. I mean, you know, controversy aside, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, there were some some issues with the game, like just as a as a game itself. Yeah, true, true, true. So some of those spells, it was like, damn, what the fuck. Mm, yeah, spells were kind of broken. Um, the, the curses. Yeah, I, I I would know. You would know way more than me. So um, all of the games that got nominated for game of the year also got nominated for best game direction. I think this one probably could have been uh expanded a little bit more on um but the one i really want to talk about is best narrative and best adaptation um best adaptation being taking a video game to a television or movie medium so first on the list we have castlevania obviously been a big Ooh, banger. banger uh every single season has been fire um powerhouse animation and netflix really really have outdone themselves with this show um i was never really into castlevania like that until the show so seeing an actual like visual representation because the the uh it's even got its own genre of castlevania you know type platforming what is it called metrovania or something like that yeah yeah it's got its own genre of gaming it's so iconic I've never played, I, I've never like played through any of them. So I don't know any of the story really, except for what I've gotten from the Netflix shows. And honestly, this, this deserves, I don't want to say it deserves to win because of the rest of the bangers on the list. Um, then there's Gran Turismo. Uh, I was interested in this movie 10 years ago when it was announced and like it was being talked about 10 years ago. It's not coming out until 2023 is kind of strange to me because they definitely could have did this a long time ago. Um, mm. But whatever. Uh, obviously, the for sure winner on this list is between The Last of Us and Super Mario. Like, it, honestly, as far as like video game adaptations, I believe The Last of Us is probably one of the greatest conversions I've ever seen. Just to be honest, like the Super Mario movie is is close especially because it stays very very true to the character like you really before this movie you really don't really know much about mario and luigi like at all except for their the fact that they're two plumbers trying to save a princess from mm. a turtle dragon dinosaur thing you know what i mean so and then yes. uh an expected flop twisted metal i thought that was going to be a movie i didn't realize it was going to be a tv show uh starring anthony mackie uh yeah, I didn't, you didn't like it. I watched the first episode. I was very uninterested because it's not a and this is the same criticism I have for the FNAF movie, which I think if uh, FNAF gets nominated for best adaptation next year, it's winning for sure, uh, just because it has nothing to compete with so far. Uh, maybe mm. another Sonic movie, maybe, but I don't even think I don't think that's coming out for another two years. Um, but yeah, if my same criticism with that is is just not rated properly. You have these these uh properties that are rated you know pg-13 and they would definitely benefit from being rated r especially because the material is very mature um yeah i don't see i don't see the correlation there so um the only other thing i think it could probably compete with next year is arcane because arcane drops next year so uh we'll have a very interesting year man and then if they manage to get that cyberpunk tv show off the ground then maybe that'll compete so and i think the last season of the witcher is probably coming out next year so actually yeah there are some bangers never mind let me shut the fuck up mm, so um lastly the the last thing i want to talk about is best narrative um specifically because i think there's a couple on here that don't need to be in here um final fantasy 16 yeah really no. yeah final fantasy 16 is <laughs> snoozer you didn't like it nah man wow. that that shit is actually ass um it, it just it doesn't play out very well in this like game of thrones era type shit uh, maybe because they don't involve the actual world enough because the story is really just like <laughs> hardcore sleeper but hmm. they just don't involve how epic this world really is because this is i think this is the first time final fantasy has gone like full medieval and it's also the story of the origin of the summons and stuff so i was just expecting a lot more from that storyline um the other one i think that doesn't belong in here is spider-man 2 um for sure 
for for best narrative for best narrative yeah i think it has a weak story bro kind of weak compared I mean, to the first one like i like the story i think the story was the best part mm. if there's only one hot take i have about best narrative i think alan wake 2 shouldn't be on here you think so that story was i watched the whole thing it just uh, it's like very I don't know how to explain it. It's supposed to be, it's trying like way too hard to be avant garde and shit, like mm. different and shit. Yeah. I, I just didn't like the direction that it went. I was like, I was sitting there like, huh? I, I haven't seen enough to, to be able to tell. Like, uh, as far Some as I the... know, you could have easily replaced <clears throat> Alan Wake 2 with Remnant 2, and I would have been like, oh, that makes sense. And Trust. I couldn't follow shit that was going on in Remnant 2. I really Remnant couldn't. 2 is a lore game for sure. Yeah. That's Alan Wake 2 was to, like a weird story. Yeah, it's definitely one you have to like look at the wiki every 25 minutes. And any any game that I have to do that for that's not Elden Ring, uh, yeah, no, I'm cool. I don't know no. why I give Elden Ring so much, like put Elden Ring on a pedestal, probably because it the way it delivered the story bits of the game was very interesting in comparison to the other Dark Souls games that I've played. I, they just haven't i don't know maybe this one just rang a little differently for me because it was an rpg and i was more invested but yeah Alan hmm. Wake 2 is not yeah i don't think you can just drop that out of there so uh that's the only one i i kind of have an issue with uh as far uh, as phantom liberty had a weird story too i haven't finished so, it so i uh, okay i won't spoil it then yeah but i didn't I, I wasn't a big fan of it they they all end the same the only thing I'm a fan mm. of is them changing one of the endings of the game to a Phantom Liberty tie-in ending, which, you know. Oh, yeah, that ending? Yeah, for them to that do that is, bad. is, yeah. I was, that ending was crazy. Now, if, like, if I really think about it, that ending was crazy. Oh, yeah. That I'm shit. Gonna, I'm going to have to keep playing it then, for sure. Well, the, 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 the story ending that you get after you beat Phantom Liberty. Oh, okay. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have to... That shit was... I, I was like, oh, if we're doing it based on that, I'll keep Phantom Liberty there. But the other, like, the ending of the actual Phantom Liberty DLC was... Uh, I, I would it think it's, like, it's ah, both. Okay, both are well. included because it's both pieces of new content that came with Phantom Liberty, so... Okay, well, I don't, I didn't really like the that ending specifically. Mm. Uh, but I, I like the idea that Phantom... Uh, not uh, Night City is like... It's always going to be a shit place no matter what happens. Yeah, it's its own character. And that's uh, I, I really like that. I, I I really enjoy when games do things like that. Kind of like in Spider-Man, where the city is essentially its own character. You know, like it, it exists outside of space and time re regardless of what you're doing. And shit just happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's a, a constant within that story and it's Night City. So that shit I like. Hmm. So, you know, definitely, definitely want to see more of that. But, you know, either way, it is what it is. We'll, we'll have to get some more, more video games soon. So it'll probably be another four or five years before we get uh, another cyberpunk game. So maybe a little longer. Hopefully it's uh, it, uh, it, draw, it releases better than the first one. Um, then we have mm -hmm. best ongoing game. Apex Legends, Cyberpunk 2077, Final Fantasy 16 for some reason is in here. Um, I'm Thinking sorry, wait, that an ongoing game. Ten. This one's Final Fantasy 14. Excuse me. Sorry. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, Final okay. Fantasy 14, Fortnite, and Genshin Impact. Um, this is a Cyberpunk. Yeah. Cyberpunk Cyberpunk's over with now. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I give that shit Fortnite. I don't Easy. see why League of Legends isn't in here. Uh, League of Legends, uh, their tournaments, the tournament show out is <laughs> My girlfriend said, no Roblox? <laughs> Roblox is crazy. <laughs> Maybe, Ro I think Roblox won one year. I'm not yeah. sure though. Um, so for, Fortnite, for people who crazy. don't know, the category of best ongoing game is usually a live service game that has repeated narrative and story based updates throughout time. Uh, so that's why I would say like, I would expect League of Legends um something like roblox probably wouldn't apply just because it's not not like a i don't know what would you consider roblox like an mmo or some shit i don't, know, I don't even fucking know i don't know there's just so much shit you can do in roblox yeah it's kind of just like a bunch of mini games so i probably yeah. would have expected warframe to be in here um Ooh. but yeah no nah, i don't, don't nah, think so. i don't think so um 
If I had to guess, Fortnite is probably going to take it this year, just because Apex, unless Apex doesn't Genshin do does something good too, with, but yeah, they won last year. I mean, yeah, Genshin won last year, so uh, unless Apex does something with the uh, Titanfall update or something, unless they involve Titanfall, I don't, I don't see them winning. Cyberpunk obviously not winning. Uh, they I won't do that until next year. Yeah, uh, Cyberpunk I wish would would take the win. Final Fantasy fourteen is their audience is just not as uh, vitriol. I would say is. Genshin They've got a back. decent audience. I don't know. Genshin. I hope Genshin doesn't win this year again. Because I like Genshin. Genshin would be my favorite. But I think uh, Fortnite probably deserves it a little more. Because of the yeah. shit. They're just they're just putting so much money into it. Yeah, Fortnite is. And it's like, damn. Fortnite for sure has like the best collaborations in history, period. So oh, I'm surprised sure. they didn't see Destiny 2 on here. Uh, Destiny 2 was on there last year. Yeah. Um, but Destiny 2 is ass. Yeah. But Destiny 2 is uh, nominated for Best Community Support. So we have Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, which I believe deserves Best Community Support for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Destiny if... 2, Final Fantasy 14, and No Man's Sky. So. The Destiny 2 community was trying to get uh, their developers, they were trying to get people fired. Yeah, so. they were trying to get people killed, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> they were out here de fucking death threats and shit, dude. Uh, they they can get a they we can pack that game up for sure. Yeah. Let that shit. Happen. Um, <laughs> so, um, let's see. Is there anything else? Uh, best action did game. Did Remnant Two get on here? Uh, Remnant Two actually did for a best action game. We have Armor Core Six. Um, so that one's looking pretty good. Oh, that's uh, that's it for him. Okay. Yeah, Dead Island Two. Surprisingly, um, real sleeper, Ooh. real snoozer. <laughs> Uh, Ghost Runner 2, Hi-Fi Rush. That's probably going to take the win for sure. I've, and Remnant 2. Yeah, those two, two games are great. So, um, Remnant 2, I love that game, but that should not win. Yeah. I, it's not winning against those games. It's not. I don't yeah, think. It's, it wasn't. I mean, it was a banger for us, but, you know, it's, there's no nah, I love that winning. game. Uh, I was expecting Star Wars to be in the best action game category, but um, then this is where it gets a little confusing. Best action adventure game, Alan Wake 2. Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Very, very interesting. <sighs> I don't know how three out of the five, <laughs> three out of the five uh, games that were nominated for Game of the Year have ended up in here, but uh, I guess it's not, not really something I would have picked, but you know. Whatever. Yeah. Um, action adventure gets a little gets a little weird, but I guess um, that one I would love to give to Jedi Survivor for sure. Um, yeah, they have Cameron Monaghan in uh, best performance. Yeah, that would. Be but he's cool. going against Idris Elba and Yuri Lowenthal, so I think that might yeah, be up. Yuri's definitely Yuri's taking it for sure. This is Yuri's year, absolutely. He just uh, did good too, yeah, but he's just playing yeah. himself. He's just playing himself, yeah. So I I'm not giving it to him. Um, best RPG, we're looking at Baldur's Gate. Final Fantasy, what is this? 10, 5, 16? Final Fantasy 16, of course. Lies of P, Sea of Stars, Lies didn't play that one. And Starfield. I'm surprised hey, I didn't Starfield. see Starfield for best action adventure. It should have been it should have been in a... Oh no, it is an RPG. I'm sorry. Yeah. Didn't even read that right. I, I it's so interesting that they can only pick five for best action adventure. But like Alan Wake 2 just came out. There's no way you can compare that to Hogwarts I mean it, Hogwarts wasn't the best game this year but it definitely deserves to be in the best action adventure category for sure but I don't know going up against was Resident it Evil, that even this year that was this year yeah we were wow, talking about that in February brother no I know it came out in February I thought yeah. uh I thought Black History that shit Month came Black out Wizards. last year Loki what you Loki thought that shit came out last year oh, last I thought year? it came out in 2022 mm-hmm most uh, anticipated damn i got a fight with tekken 8 and hades 2 right. for most anticipated game oh my god yeah. i've got a hard choice <laughs> best fighting game nominees this year god of rock uh i didn't even god hear about that one yeah mortal kombat yeah, 1. these are smaller ones yeah nickelodeon all-star brawl 2 uh, that just came out pocket bravery and street fighter 6 you already know who's taking this you already know it's uh, no nickelodeon right <laughs> boy you wish street fighter 6 has made the 
one of the biggest leaps from the pre from its predecessor I've ever seen in video games. Like we're talking like the difference between Assassin's Creed One and Assassin's Creed Two. Like this is this is such a huge leap. Like the community, I would say from my understanding, and I'm not even tapped in like that. Could tell I could tell people hated Street Fighter Five for sure, and uh, the universal praise that you, that Street Fighter Six is getting is just actually insane. So um, it's a great game. Yeah, good on them. W W Capcom for sure. Um, let's see, best sports, best sim. Best multiplayer presented by Discord. Okay, I don't see why they needed to add that part. But best multiplayer, we're looking at Baldur's Gate 3, Diablo 4, uh, what is this? Yeah, Diablo 4, Party Animals, Street Fighter 6, and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Um, some some pretty good bangers on here. Um, yeah, I'm thinking Diablo might take it. What do you think? Diablo? Diablo for sure. I don't know. I don't know about Diablo. I think it'll be Baldur's Gate, low key. It might mm -hmm. be Baldur's Gate. Party Animals. It was it's a good game, mm -hmm. but I don't think the the community is really there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the numbers are looking like. Yeah, for sure. And this is I have uh, that game. I this just is not voted. It. This one is voted by the audience, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I thought so. Um, most anticipated game, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, that seems like something only I'm excited for. Hades II, Like a Dragon Infinite, so part of the Yakuza series. Star Wars Outlaws, no thanks. And Tekken 8. Yes, sir. Ooh, I gotta I choose you. between Tekken 8 and Final Fantasy. This is, this is actually a tough one for me. Um, I'm not picking up Final Fantasy. It's Hades 2 or Tekken 8 for me. Yeah, those are, those it are might be Tekken 8 a little bit over. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping Star Wars doesn't win this one, uh, just because I don't think I think Ubisoft needs to go under, man. I think it's time. I think they need to be bought out by somebody and um, give all that good IP to somebody else. It's probably gonna go to Microsoft. If it goes to Microsoft, bro, I might buy an Xbox. To be honest, so maybe uh, best esports game, uh, best esport, best esport athlete, um, team, coach, all irrelevant stuff. So. I don't know anything about those. So those are your nominees for the uh, big ones this year. Um, I don't know, man. It's it's a little bit of a toss up for me. We've had some real bangers come out this year. So I think the fact that the top five games or like the games that have been nominated for game of the year are repeated in multiple categories, even though we've had 20 plus good games this year. I just don't, I don't know. Last year, Ooh. this would have been a, you know, the, the list when they put them together, it makes sense that the same five games for game of the year get nominated for everything else. But this year, I just don't see that, bro. Uh, there's just a variety of too many games. So, mm. But, you know, something smells like bullshit to me. That's art direction. Yeah. So anything, any, any particular game. category you're like really leaning towards, you're like, this is this is the one game I want to win this year. I need them to win an award. Um, I think I would really like the, hmm, it's hard. I want Fortnite to win. I, <laughs> Loki, I don't even, <laughs> I really think Fortnite should win. Yeah, I agree. I that so. one or Armored Core 6. Or oh, for sure. Like a nice little hidden banger would be cool. Um, Armor Remnant 2 would be cool too, but uh, yeah, that's just, that's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's that's not, not happening. That's uh, not happening. <laughs> the only two, I only have my heart set on two different things this year, uh, maybe three. Uh, best narrative going to Cyberpunk 2077. I need them to win something. Um, they worked way too hard on Phantom, Flan Phantom Liberty and, you know, trying to turn the community look and aspect around them for that game. They worked way too hard not to win some type of award. So, um, best cleanup job, you know, maybe if we had a category for that, <laughs> best community cleanup, um, and best adaptation. I need the last of us to win that for sure. Um, I need these, I need Naughty Dog and, uh, PlayStation Productions to have the biggest egos possible going into the next project. Um, but then again, when they, when the studio gets ego like that, they start ego rushing and then they just put out whatever the fuck they want to put out and it flops so i don't know um they ended up canceling sly cooper because they thought that project was being rushed and then they came out with ratchet and clank and it was not received the best 
so i don't know i i think they really need to get their ducks in a row but the last of us was definitely a banger uh most likely because and actually now that i think about it all of all of the video game adaptations the best ones have had uh the best direction to where the director is a very well-known director or makes dope shit outside of their like career and they work directly hand in hand every single day in and out of the trenches with the original creator of whatever ip it is because the last of us and fnaf are are perfectly good examples i don't know what the fuck is going on with avatar the last airbender but hopefully the netflix has some shit going on over there that they're they're cooking up with the original nickelodeon team that would be real nice so uh we'll see mm. but, yeah um, i mean that game did you see it uh for the trailer yeah i actually have a friend who's working on the special effects for that um and oh, she okay. told me so far it looks like hot ass yeah and she's on the special effects team so that is great uh, i don't mm, i don't know if she's saying it's a hot pack of ass that makes me a little nervous i think i think if this does come out to be ass i think we need to just wrap it up i think the last airbender is just something that needs a good 10 12 15 year wait time period before we you know start cooking up anything else man this is really going to make avatar studios look bad though because this is their first major like solo project like now that the studio has been established yeah i, I don't know obviously the animated stuff is going to do really well because you know we're going to watch the shit out of that but yeah I, I don't know unless they have ads attached to everything every five minutes like a broke youtuber i uh, I, don't, I don't know i don't know how they're going to make this money back because they're already sitting at a 200 million dollar budget for this tv show oh. so it's man crazy. another core uh category i want the, i need the hot wheel uh hot wheels game to win and best sports slash racing best sports slash racing I, I didn't even i didn't even know we we're still doing that hold on let me see Best sports uh, slash racing game. game. Yeah, EA Sports, FC24, F1, Forza Motorsport, Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, and the crew motor. Didn't the crew come out like two years ago? What the fuck? I don't even know. Motorfest? How is this in? Nah, Ubisoft is just. Ubisoft is crazy if they think they're they're winning this. So, anybody thinking Ubisoft is gonna win this is smoking dick. Uh, yeah, Hot Wheels taking the W. Sure, why not? So, should I pick Hades too? Because Hades two might have a trailer at the Game Awards. Uh, I think they're gonna have a trailer regardless if they win, buddy. No, I know. I'm just saying, should I pick it though? Because I Tekken eight, they already like they just did their last character, so they're not dropping shit. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, I think you should flip a coin on that. I just, one. I just picked Tekken eight. Who cares? Okay, all right. Well, he's currently doing his picks, so. Um. But yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty much it. You got anything else you wanna? Any hot takes you wanna get off this week? Hot takes? Nah, nothing too hot. Yeah. You know. Right. Well, hey man, it's been a pleasure. Subscribe to the show. So yeah, subscribe. Uh, if you guys are listening to the audio version, uh, make sure to follow all of the social media links down below. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little tired from all of this extra talking. So uh, if you're listening to the audio version, thank you guys so much. If you are watching the video version of this, make sure to hit that like button, leave us a comment on what your favorite topic was on this episode. Also, if you're not subscribed already, you might as well go ahead and do that and hit that notification bell because uh, you know, that way you can get notified every single time a new show is live, baby. Man, man, come on, man. Just just go on and do it. It's absolutely free. Um, and if you guys have made it this far uh, into the show, we want to say thank you so much. Thank you for all the support. We know we've been on hiatus for a little bit. Um, but, you know, we back, baby. Um, also, make sure to financially support the show because, you know, it helps us keep the lights on. It uh, boards up the windows in Plank's basement because, you know, it's yes, wintertime, sir. baby. It's cold out here. Uh, we want to thank you guys for listening. Make sure to keep it canon.